Welcome to the 2014 Block of the Month at the Quilt Show. We have a beautiful alphabet sampler designed by Janet Stone. It's called A to Z for you and me. My name is Julie Cephalou and I'm going to be bringing you some helpful hints each month to make this a really successful project. So to start out, uh, you want to print out the applique templates and when you print them out, make sure you're printing them out at actual size. There's a no scaling option on your printer properties. Make sure that's checked out off when you print it. And there's a square that would measure one inches exactly after you've printed it out. Now that you've printed out your applique pattern, which by the way has also been reversed for fusible web applique, you're going to want to make sure you watch episode 1401 and Janet Stone is going to give you some amazing tips on how she does her applique. She is an award-winning quilter and you're going to see why when you see her, her show. The very first block we're going to be working on is called the army block. And this block in itself has 24 seams in it. So I think it's going to be really important that you check your quarter inch seam allowance before you get started. I have a, a nice method that I like to use to check my seam allowance. And I take three strips of fabric. They measure two and a half by six and a half inches. Sew them together. You'll have two seams. Press your seams and measure it. It should measure six and a half inches across. If it's a little more than that, then your seam allowances are slightly too narrow. And if it's less than six and a half inches, your seam allowances are a little bit too big. So I have a couple of tools that I like to set up on my sewing machine to give me that good quarter inch seam allowance. One of them is called Sewing Edge and it's by Q Tools. The other one is the Perfect Piecing Seam Guide and that's by Perkins Dry Goods. Let me show you how I would set that up on my sewing machine. So I've got my Perfect Piecing Seam Guide which has a hole in it that my needle is going to go into on my machine. And it's a scant quarter inch from that needle to the outside edge of my ruler. So we're going to put this underneath our presser foot and lower the needle into that hole and then lower your presser foot. Make sure that ruler is coming off of the machine nice and straight. And then you're going to take a piece of the sewing edge and you don't need a lot, just about an inch or an inch and a half. And that is going to go right next to the edge of your ruler. And you want to make sure that you put it so that it's in front of your feed dogs, not covering any of your feed dogs. And then once you've got that in place, you can bring up your needle, lift your presser foot, and now you've got a nice edge here and you can nestle up that fabric right next to that edge. And the other thing it does is it feeds the fabric strips straight into your sewing machine. So I think that really helps with the accuracy as well. So now that you've got your perfect quarter inch, this is what your block is going to look like on the back side and you've got a couple of tricky parts to this block. You've got four flying geese units and the half square triangle units in the corners. And one of the things about Janet's pattern is she has a lot of the units made oversized and then you trim them down to perfect sizes at, at the end and I love that about her instructions. So the flying geese units are also going to be made in the F block and let me show you how you're going to trim those up using just a standard ruler and I'll also show you how to use the block lock rulers that Janet likes so much. Okay so here I've got my flying geese unit and I have a ruler that has a 45 degree line going through it. I want to make sure that that 45 degree line lands on my seam right here and then I also want to make sure that the quarter inch line of the ruler ends up on the point of my flying geese unit. So it should look like that. Now I can go ahead and trim this side and then I'm going to turn this around and trim the other side. This needs to measure two inches across. So put the two inch line on my cut edge. 
trim that side. And now I want to trim the other two sides. Now this needs to measure three and a half inches across this way. I want that point to end up in the center of that. So half of three and a half is one and three quarters. So I'm going to put the one and three quarter inch line of my ruler right at that point and I still have that diagonal line on my seam. And now I can go ahead and trim this side, turn it around and trim the last side. That's going to be at the three and a half inch line over here. And now I've got a perfect flying geese unit. The other way that you can trim your flying geese unit up is using the block lock ruler. And these rulers have a groove on the underside of it that fits right into the seam of your flying geese unit. So this ruler is to trim up a one and a half by three inch finished size flying geese unit. So you can put it right in there so it nestles right against the seam allowance of your flying geese unit and you're going to trim two sides. This side on the right and across the top. And then you don't even need to move the ruler. You're just going to take the whole thing and turn it around. Keep that ruler in place and then you'll trim the other two sides. It's really easy. There's no measuring. Not too much thinking involved here. Remove that ruler and there's your perfect trimmed flying geese unit. To be clear, let me repeat that one more time if you're new to this block lock ruler. The ruler itself says one and a half by three inch finished, but you're actually trimming it to a two by three and a half inch size. But you're also able to use a regular ruler with a 45 degree line instead of the block lock ruler. So the next block we have to work on is called the grandmother's choice block and it's made up of four pinwheel units and I want to show you how I can get a beautiful intersection here in the middle of my pinwheels. So you're going to have your four half square triangle units and you're going to be sewing them into pairs. You'll need two pairs for each pinwheel. You're going to need to make sure that you get a nice intersection here for each pair and to do that um, you're going to start by matching up and nesting those diagonal seams and you can pin, I don't pin myself, but you can pin right here and then when you start sewing, sew with this seam so that it's at the top feeding into your machine first and that's going to help you get a more accurate seam. Then. Here's my two pairs and I've pressed those seam allowances so that they're going to be opposing each other. And now I'm going to use a setting pin to get these four seams to all converge in the middle. So if I were to put this right sides together, I'm going to take a pin and it's, the pin is going to go through an X that's formed from your seams. So the setting pin goes down into the middle of that X and you can check on the other side to make sure it came out right where it's supposed to. And then it's going to go down into the center of these seams on the second half. And again, you can check to make sure that's come out right. And now the setting pin is going to stay vertical like this and you're going to pin on each side of it. Before you pin on each side of that though, you can open this up and take a peek and you can actually see that your seams are all right where you want them to be. Once that looks good, you can go take a pin and pin on this side and then on the other side of that setting pin. And once you've got it pinned, you can remove that setting pin and sew your quarter inch seam allowance. And then when you open that up, you should have a beautiful, perfect center for your pinwheel. So that's it for our first month. We've done the letters A, F, and G, and I think you're going to get really nice, precise blocks using Janet's method. I love the way she's oversized her pattern pieces. And for the next month, we'll be tackling the letters B, C, and D. So I'll see you at the next lesson.